This is the Dad Devotionals Podcast with Dave Domzowski. Each week, I'll bring you compelling interviews that'll educate, inspire, and motivate you to become the father and husband our Lord called you to be. We're a community of devoted dads who want to strengthen our faith and family and live out our true purpose in this life. Please, won't you join us? Just text me at 717-913-5671, and you'll be welcomed into my Devoted Dads community. And if you want to support the podcast, we invite you to purchase a product, a book, or a course in our affiliate shop on daddevotionals.com. You can also contribute monthly at patreon.com slash daddevotionals. Now, here's today's show. God bless. Hey, parents. Do you want the perfect addition to your homeschool adventure? You have to check out the Tuttle Twins. Go to daddevotionals.com slash Tuttle Twins. That's T-U-T-T-L-E. The Tuttle Twins helps homeschool parents convey the principles of freedom to their kids in a fun way. They have books for toddlers ages 5 to 11 and 12 and older. They even have a fabulous economic curriculum along with parent teaching guides. Your kids will learn about the golden rule, entrepreneurship, the free market, property rights, the importance of education, and more. Don't wait to add these books to your kids' education plan. Go to daddevotionals.com slash Tuttle Twins today. That's daddevotionals.com slash Tuttle Twins. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast like Dad Devotionals? Well, you can, and it's easier than you think. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, let me give you a quick rundown. Basically, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Anchor's what I use to distribute Dad Devotionals. Here's how it works. Anchor lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to the most popular listening platforms, including Spotify, with a single tap. Anchor is also the only place you can publish video podcasts to Spotify. With Anchor, creators can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Want to check it out? Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to Dad Devotionals. This is a special two-part series with my wife, Anna Domzowski. The topic, homeschooling your children. Now, before we start, just a little about her. Anna is a stay-at-home mother to her two young children. In a previous life, she was a rock star real estate agent, teacher, and accountant. For this episode, we're going to explore how to get started with homeschooling and take some time to discuss the father's role. In part two, we'll cover different homeschooling philosophies and programs to consider as you start out. Anna, welcome to the program. It's great to have you, and I'm so glad we get to do this. Hey, thanks for having me. No problem. Well, let's start out, number one, let's start out with why do we, the Domzowski household, why do we homeschool? Do you want to share how we came to that decision for our family. Yeah, sure. So I get this question probably once a week. And when we first started this conversation years and years ago, it was such a simple answer. Um, We had a son as our firstborn, Davey. And I would just point to um, the rapid feminization of America and the toxic masculinity that they were teaching. And I just didn't want my son growing up in a world where he thought because of the gender that he was born with, there was something wrong with him. Um, And that started the conversation in our household. Everywhere I looked, I saw men being put down. I saw women being smarter, better. And I saw this pervasive attitude across our country that for a woman to be good, it must mean that a man is bad. And when I looked into my five-month-old baby's eyes, I couldn't comprehend that. I couldn't comprehend in first grade him being different because he's a boy, being fidgety, being um, busy, and that meaning that he needed to be medicated. Um, And the The more I studied and the more I talked to people, the more I started hearing one in seven boys are getting medicated in our public school systems because the boy brain is different. I mean, it's just not a girl's brain. 
So the conversation started there. But since that time, it's taken so many different levels. Why I homeschool today isn't because of that. I Actually, that is probably one of my furthest reasons from homeschooling. Um, the reason I homeschool today is I can't imagine missing the moment my son figured out how to read. It was the coolest thing. Sitting on the couch, cuddled up around a thousand books and watching him sound out those three so those CBC words, those three letter words, watching him look at me big eyed and be like, I read that. Re- driving to lunch with him with his little Bob books in the back seat um, on his way to Chili's and being so excited. I didn't want to miss that. I didn't want to pass that job to somebody else who, I mean, no offense to teachers, but You teach 25 kids to read a year. It's not that exciting after 10 years. But for me, that child, my son, that was the most amazing moment of the day. Since then, today, we worked on caring in addition, watching it click for him, watching him work. Um, But there's all these other moments, too. We're working on cursive. And he's, you know, first grade, learning cursive, still mastering print. It's not easy. And I watch him struggle and to be able to sit there and put my virtue into him, to be able to explain to him, like we work through the hard, we push through, we try again, we do our best versus, okay, well, time's up, move on to the next subject Mm -hmm. versus having someone who walks by and say, that's good enough. Me being able to stop him and say, Try again. You can do this. I believe in you. Um, The moments where I can see exactly where he's struggling and I can break it down to like, hey, you know what? I see you're not getting the the swoosh. Let's just practice the swoosh today. Let's just pause and do that. Um, And then watching it click. For those reasons, I homeschool. Um, For the reason that my family is all together, that I'm with them every moment of the day, that I know who his friends are. I know what he's playing. I know what he's doing. I know what he's watching. I know what he's learning. Um, I homeschool for those reasons. Mm -hmm. I homeschool for uh, diversity. That's my favorite reason um, in this wild woke world that we live in to be able to tell somebody um, homeschooling is ultimate diversity. Because I get to teach my kid that this is who you are and this is what our family believes in and this is what makes us unique and different um, versus him having to learn that we're all the same all the time because we're not. We're all unique with these different stories and these different histories. And he gets to go to school in co-op where all these kids come from different backgrounds with different traditions and they bring it in. And he comes to me with all these like different experiences Mm -hmm. um, that are valued and people are excited about. And he doesn't have to be like his friend. His family doesn't have to look and act like his friends. We don't have to eat the same foods and talk about the same things and embrace the same language history. We just get to be who we are. And that is okay. So for that reason, and then ultimately the last reason um, I think came to me probably within the last year, I remember um, sitting on my couch when Newtown, Connecticut happened Mm. and seeing those kindergartners and wondering what it would be like to be a mother there. And this year is my kid's official kindergarten year, even though he's doing first grade. And I look in his eyes and I ask myself if I could ever forgive myself if I put him in an environment that caused him that trauma. And every day all around our country, we're knowingly putting our kids in schools that are not safe. We're putting our kids in environments that we can't protect them. And we're asking them at five, six, eight, 12 years old, to perhaps witness and hear 
things that as a 38-year-old woman, I don't know that I could comprehend. And I think it's okay to protect childhood. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to let our kids be little. I think it's okay. I think it's my job to keep them safe. And I don't think I could bear to have the knowledge that I have today about the unsafe school environments that our kids go to and participate in. And that I knowingly put him in that position for money. I mean, quite frankly, it's what 90% of our reasons in this world come down to is money and that paycheck. And I don't know that my child's mental health, his physical health, his well-being, his safety is worth it. Absolutely. So we know we have an idea of why we did it. And I think you gave an excellent explanation there Um, just in terms of Every, every little thing along the way, what led us to make this decision ultimately and why we keep making it every year uh, and how it's worked out so well for our family and how in, in many ways we folks think we look like geniuses in some respects, even though, you know, we weren't thrust into it like COVID. We like many people were for COVID. We were actually planning on doing this from the very beginning. So you, you, you understand why the Mzowskis are homeschooling, but let's get into why others should homeschool and take that plunge. For all the reasons I just said, um, if you have a daughter, think about her um, between the social media, between um, the physical safety. Mm. We now have shared bathrooms in many schools um, is are you okay with having your 10 year old raped? I mean, just ask yourself, what is worth it? Is it the house? Is it the car? I will live under a bridge. And I know I have so many people that will scoff at that thought, but absolutely it, nothing is worth it for me to look at my four-year-old and be like, yeah, I need that extra income. Um, and your physical safety has to be risked. My family values, no teacher can teach my personal family values. I think if you're an American today, whether you are black or Chinese, um, if you're Hispanic of any culture, to allow someone else to take your place and teach your kid your story, your family story, your family's um, value system, in some ways, that's a crime. How could I ever teach your family story? I am not, I don't come from an African-American background. I don't come from a Chinese background. I don't come from a Hispanic background. I don't know what it was like to be an immigrant. I don't know what it's like to come up out of segregation when it's a generation away. I don't have that story. So for me to stand in front of a classroom and opine my feelings is a travesty and a disservice to your cultural history. Mm. You should own it. You should spend the hours teaching your kids that. Your kids should know your stories, your grandmother's stories, your great-grandmother's stories, and the language We created public school in this country so that our kids could become factory workers and they could all simulate and all look the same and basically be robots for the production of products. Mm. My child is more important than the production of the automobile. My child and my family history and our cultural diversity is more important than the assimilation into a country that's basically just built on money. So why should you homeschool? Because you love your kid. Because your kid's future and your legacy is more important than whatever reason is stopping you. Mm. I constantly hear the reason of income. I constantly hear the reason of I'm not well-educated. These reasons, I I don't know how not to be blunt, but they're foolish. Mm. 
I mean, if you can read, you can teach your child to read. There are so many resources out there. You, I went, I got a master's in education. <laughs> Believe me, um, they did not teach me how to teach reading. They did not teach me how to be a teacher. Um, I, I wrote a lot of essays and I, I wrote some theory books, but I learned to be a teacher sitting at my child's side, mm. working with them, seeing their struggle, getting online, asking communities of very invested parents and getting help, finding curriculum, buying new curriculum, changing curriculums. Um, we run a side hustle in our family so that I stay home. Right. My husband, you know, works, I always joke, three different jobs <laughs> um, so that I can stay home and raise our kids. We downsized our life. We sold my dream house. We left my dream town. Um, and none of it matters. We don't take these lavish family vacations. Right. We don't drive beautiful brand new cars. I don't live in a lavish home. Although, and I will be the first person to say that, most of the re- things that we say that we <clears throat> lack are truly first world problems. If I compared myself to somebody living in 90% of the rest of the world, I am in a lavish home. I do have an extraordinarily lavish life. Mm -hmm. I have running water. I have food on the table. I have snacks. I have more blessings than I could ever, ever understand. Um, And so we, when we sit back and we say, oh gosh, you know, if I stop working, we can only have one car. It's not that big of a sacrifice. We, in our first world, America, make this out to be a massive sacrifice that we don't live in suburbia or have the newest home or take the luxury vacation. But the greatest gift is getting to know your kids. Mm, Absolutely. Well, welcome to Anna Unplugged. I mean, you're getting, uh, you know, raw Anna here. We're actually recording this at almost 10 o'clock at night with hopefully our kids staying in bed. So uh, you're getting unfiltered thoughts. So I hope you appreciate it and know that she's speaking from the heart. These are the conversations that we have a lot. And it's it's just so important to be able to be raw and to be real and to just be upfront with you. I mean, if you we have two open seats here at the kitchen table right now. And if you were sitting here with us, you'd be getting the same exact Anna as you're getting right now. And I am making you extremely (laughs) uncomfortable, aren't I? (laughs) Well, Speaking of uncomfort, um, let's talk about some of the fears and the doubts that folks might have starting out. Can you touch on those for a little bit? Um, the biggest things is curriculum. Like, what what will I teach my child? How will I ever get my kid into college? And just a note on that, we will cover that in part two of this series. But I'm sorry, hon, back to you. Um, other things is obviously the income. Like, how will I support my life? There, there are many people that, um, and I have some families in our co-op, they work full time. The wife works full time from home and the kids are homeschooled at her elbow. She juggles both. I mean, that is a strong woman Mm -hmm. definition right there. Um, you know, I'm not married, you know, I'm on my own. How do I do this? Um, other worries and concerns are, am I smart enough? Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, just to touch on it briefly again, especially with COVID, there are so many resources out there. There's so many support systems out there, whatever you're concerned about, I'll just take it back to you and ask you measure it against a Columbine Mm -hmm. and ask yourself is whatever I'm scared about my kid getting into Harvard. How would that fear rate against getting the phone call that my kids are being escorted out of a building because of a bomb? Sure. Um, I think sometimes that brings it into perspective. And we always say, well, that won't happen in my school. That won't happen in my town. The father of the Columbine student that got killed said the same thing. Right. And now he advocates daily for parents to take their kids out of these environments and homeschool them and bring their babies home. Wow. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of 
variety of reasons for people. Um, I think it's becoming more crystal clear as we're starting to learn what's being taught in schools. Um, parents are starting to realize that, oh, you're not teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic anymore. <laughs> um, you're teaching philosophy and a lot of other things that maybe are best left to the dinner table conversation for a mom and a dad. Sure. Um, that are best left to the family's belief system and their cultural background, um, that they can help their children navigate that better than a teacher who doesn't really actually know their child. Sure. So um, you may have lots of different concerns. Um, I would say there are amazing resources out there and just to take one step at a time. All right. Well, with that, we're going to take a moment to thank our sponsors. But when we come back, we'll chat more with my wife, Anna, about starting out with homeschooling. We'll be right back. Hey, dads, are you responsible for your household or business finances? If so, check out my website, runthemoney.com. Run the Money is the place for money management tips for saving more, paying off debt, and budgeting. I also give you ideas and information for starting a side business. If you're in between jobs or need a way to get a better handle on your family's money, go to runthemoney.com for free articles on money management. That's runthemoney.com, R-U-N-T-H-E-M-O-N-E-Y, all one word, runthemoney.com. I'll see you there. All right, so we're back with my wife, Anna Domzowski, and the topic is homeschooling your children. All right, Anna, we got all the, you know, ifs, ands, and and buts, and, you know, the who, what, where, when, why, and how, and how we got started, and some fears that people may face. But let's, let's get real. Let's talk about a day in the life with homeschooling our six-year-old and four-year-old. Take it away. Um, so a day in the life in our family starts with everyone is basically up and out of bed at seven in the morning. We shower, get dressed. Um, we come downstairs. I do continental breakfast where fruits, um, breads are put out. It really is a smorgasbord. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. (laughs) And, um, we sit down and we do a basic form of a morning basket. Um, if you're in the homeschooling world, Our morning basket consists of Bibles and manners, um, recitation. We follow the classical model, calendar, um, and prayers. Um, Other homeschoolers obviously have very different morning baskets. Um, They do more with music and art and poetry. We do, but our daily morning basket always has those elements in it. Um, Before you continue, hon, uh, what is, what's a morning basket? Can you, can you get into that a little bit more? So a morning basket is where the whole family gathers together. Sometimes they gather at the kitchen table or on the floor, but it's for all ages. And you present um, the broader education and the beauty of the whole world to them. And you might be studying a country and you can have it geared for a fifth grader and a preschool or to kind of all learn together mm-hmm. where you're reading poetry from China. You're talking about where China is on the map. You're talking about the language that the Chinese speak. You're learning the geography of the Chinese land. Um, and that's all encompassed. You're listening to a Chinese song and that's all encompassed within your morning basket. Um, so a morning basket is all the family together co- covering those extra subjects. Um, and then when you're at the kitchen table and you're working more or less one-on-one with many of your students, that's where you're focusing more on those individual subjects where like reading my preschooler and my first grader aren't reading at the same place. So they mm-hmm. need different skills and different strategies and different books and different curriculums. Math is done separately. So the morning basket is all together. Um, Some people like to start out with a song and then they go into poetry readings. We do manners. So we'll talk about how to sit at a table, how to address people, please and thank yous. Um, And because they're still both so young, we'll go over the calendar, days of the week, months of the year. And because we're classical, 
both children have recitation questions that I ask and they have to be able to answer. Um, and I, on Mondays, we'll introduce their new recitation, their new artwork of the week and their new song of the week. And then that is just kind of reviewed slowly throughout the week. Um, after Morning Basket, my preschooler will go off and play. Um, I have a corner set up for her of dolls and castles and just she knows where her fun things are and she goes off and she plays. Um, one of the biggest struggles people have when starting is that baby underfoot, that preschooler, that toddler constantly coming back to the table and interrupting lessons that you're trying to do with your older children. I have found consistency and um, patience are usually the top things to get through that. We're now into the month of May where the routine is so well established. She knows that unless she's bleeding from the head, um, now it's not a good time to interrupt her brother. Um, so very true. Very true. <laughs> she knows how to get her own water. There's food readily available and just to play and enjoy yourself. And if she gets bored, she can come sit at the table and color with us, but th this is one-on-one -on -one time. So my son and I, we will start usually with spelling. Um, and then we'll go into reading our language art series, and then he'll go on break. And my daughter will get her one-on-one -on -one time with me where I will do her preschool curriculum, which is really about 15, 20 minutes of her thinking she's doing school. Um, and we're doing the letter of the week or practicing writing something. And then she goes off and plays and I put her around the kitchen and clean a couple of things up from breakfast to give my son a full 30 minute mental break before he comes back and he does his math his copy book, his handwriting, his cursive, his memorization. Um, and then we do, usually we end with everyone coming to the couch together and we do a little read aloud story time, geography, science lesson, and then they're done. Um, right now, because we're wrapping up our year and he's basically completed all of his curriculum already for first grade, this entire time takes about two hours. Okay. When we were in January, what, what's your start and, and finish time? Typically, We start at 8 a.m. We end at 10. Okay. Now, when we were in January and February, we some days easily could take two and a half to three hours. Um, I've never done a school day more than three hours. And three hours was just because I added more in because of interests. And I was just following his interest and we spent more time discussing things than what other kids may have. Um, so we run a very regimented school from eight to 10 or eight to 11. And then we have lunch. And then I usually have afternoon activities. My son is a golfer. So we'll hit the golf course. We'll go grocery shopping together. We'll have play dates where we'll have friends come over. Um, oh, so many friends. So many play dates. <laughs> um, there's at least two to three times a week. We just have a house full of people. My husband sometimes tells me that I run a daycare without him knowing and I don't get paid for it. Um, but we do feed a lot of people. You just had a house at home. Um, but um, there's so many other activities. Uh, we'll go swimming. We'll take field trips. Um, just doing daily life, it always amazes me um, the knowledge my kids have and their comfort level about going about daily life um, compared to kids that are in a school all day. Um, you know, my son can swipe the credit card, can check me out at Giant, can basically, Lord have mercy. <laughs> basically shop for me and I just follow along. Um, my daughter is getting pretty proficient at being able to read the numbers on the screen and explaining to all the other people in Giant how much money mommy spent. <laughs> um, so that is our day. Now, our day is not a typical day in homeschooling. Our day is unique to our family, to my style of parenting, and I can't emphasize that enough. I thrive as a mother in structure. From the day my children were born, um, I was at a library at 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> I needed a place to go and something to do. I am 
if I, we were in the house at 10, I started to have panic attacks. Um, I thrive in structure, whereas I have many friends who homestead, they live on farms. Their structure is based around the chickens and the pigs and the cows and the running of the farm and the household and the canning and the gardening. Um, and their day looks very, very different. Mm -hmm. I have moms that work all day. Um, and for them, their day looks different. Their evenings and afternoons when their day job is done is filled with homeschooling. Their lunch break is filled with homeschooling. Their before their day starts is filled with homeschooling. Their middle of the day is filled with their children doing independent studies or playing outside or doing nature walks in the backyard or going to friend's house is how mom gets her day job done. Um, so what my day looks like and what your day may look like will be completely different. It should be completely different. It should fit the rhythm of your family. Um, I have a mom who, you know, she works late at night. So her daughter stays up to one in the morning to say good night to mom when mom gets home and their day doesn't start until 11 in the morning. And that's okay. Right. Like the daughter is still thriving. The daughter is still social. The daughter is a happy, happy child. And the mother is doing all the things to give her child a quality education at home with her in a safe environment. So you can hear my side and be like, oh gosh, I don't think I could start a day at eight. Well, you don't have to. Right. Um, and you might have kids that are different. You might have a kid that takes two hours to get his math done because they're falling off their chair every five minutes. There's nothing wrong with that. You might need to give more breaks to some of your students or less breaks to others. You could have a kid that wants to get school done in one hour and they are focused and they need no breaks. And you might not have a kid that needs to take all day. Yeah. Um, the beauty of homeschooling is that you can create that rhythm in your household. You can meet your child's needs where they're at and how they strive. It doesn't have to be done at the kitchen table. You can, I have friends that create a room in their house and that's a homeschool room and they go to that room. I have friends that homeschool all over their farm, outside, inside, all over, under beds, in beds, under tents. Um, the kids are getting their work done. They're learning, they're growing, they're thriving. So I think the question isn't what a day in the life typically looks like, but what would it look for your family to be thriving? In, in terms of thriving for the Domzowskis, um, what are some of the, maybe your favorite aspects of homeschooling so far, but then also touch on some of the surprises, some of the things that you didn't expect, you know, good, the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, oh gosh, that's a big question. So <laughs> that's what we ask here. Um, I think the surprises was that I was going to love it. Um, when we first started this journey, my husband was definitely the pusher of the education. He was absolutely sure that we could do this. I was kind of not very sure. I just figured she was going to be doing it, but I was an advocate for her doing it. <laughs> I, I had a very different vision for my life. And this is a common thread that you'll hear in homeschooling. Um, as women, especially in our generations, in our 30s and our 40s, our 20s, as children, we were all told to grow up and get a career. Um, and then that would be our value. And that would be, you get a job and that's who you are. That's your identity. And then you get a paycheck and then that's your value. And all of a sudden I woke up one day and I'm the stay at home mom and I don't have a paycheck. So I didn't know what my value was. Um, I didn't have a career. So I didn't know what my identity was. And you know, you can't wrap your identity into your children because that's always disastrous. So there was this very hard period of trying to wrap my brain around who I was when I was conditioned that I had to go be something and do something and produce something. And all of a sudden, I'm just working on this 18 year old project that may or may not turn out. <laughs> um, so I went into this journey like, okay, I guess this is what we're doing. Um, I, I love my husband. I, I trust my husband. He seems to believe really strongly on this. I had a very sage godmother who said to me, 
take one year at a time. You don't have to decide 12th grade in preschool. Mm -hmm. And I really took that to heart. And I was like, we're just going to do preschool. (laughs) I'm not going to worry about kindergarten. And then COVID hit and it became really a super simple decision. I didn't have another choice. Okay. Well, we're, kindergarten is at the kitchen table. First grade's at the kitchen table. Um, but in that time, I woke up and I realized that my entire purpose, my calling as a mother, my calling as a woman, my purpose as a human all started to be fulfilled in this role of mother, teacher, household manager, that my value all of a sudden wasn't tied to a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar income or paycheck, but all of a sudden my value was infinite. That no one could love my children the way that I love them. No one could nurture my children the way that I nurture them. No one could guide my family the way that I do. And all of a sudden, instead of being replaceable by a boss who's annoyed because I didn't put the decimal in the right place or I didn't use the red pen instead of the red pencil from my accounting days, all of a sudden I was irreplaceable. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was surprising to me that I go to bed completely and absolutely fulfilled in a way that no job ever gave me. Um I didn't think I would enjoy teaching as much as I did. I taught for five years in the inner city and I loved those kids and I loved that experience. But um, it was one grade. They weren't mine. Um, There were a lot of them and there were totally different circumstances. And I thought, oh, this is going to be boring. This isn't going to be exciting. But I found it incredibly challenging, incredibly fulfilling and absolutely joyful. Hmm. Um, So the good was that I found in classical education, we're always pursuing the good and the beautiful. And I found that my life turned into that pursuit of the good and the beautiful, that I could fill my days and my children's minds and hearts with the good and the beautiful. Hmm. Um, And then the hard was, kind of like a double-edged sword in being completely at peace with the decision of leading the road well-traveled and going onto the road less traveled. But then that moment of realizing that you got off the well-traveled road and getting on the, the grassy overgrown road and wondering how lonely you were going to be. Were you going to have friends? Um, Were how were people going to view you? How was family going to view you? You know, all those things. And um, knowing 100% that I would not trade one moment of sitting at the table with my child, but also that I've never been so exhausted at the end of the day of schooling two little humans <laughs> and then running play dates and constantly teaching them because they ask so many questions and activities. Oh, the activities and going to all their activities and fulfilling as many of the needs that I possibly can fulfill and never coming close. But at the same time, standing there and talking to that working mother and getting that question that kills all of us homeschool mothers in the heart when you hear, so what do you do? Hmm. Um, and not having that answer, um, because I don't do anymore. I am something mm-hmm. complete and beautiful to my family, but I don't have that do. I have many things. Um, and so that was, that was the hard it's become slightly easier, but there are still those moments where you meet the older women, the that led the charge on feminism and still believe in, you know, the work of women is outside of the home and having them just stare at you so confused when you say, Oh yeah, we homeschool. And it's like, why? Um, And having to explain that all the time and, and not knowing if it's going to be well-received. 
Well, I think it's definitely going to be well received by the folks listening to this episode. And it's becoming more and more well received as people learn about our family and learn what the kids are doing and learn how well they're doing. And then, you know, just as your husband, hon, I've I've noticed how you've stepped into the role, really made it your own and, and done your due diligence in so many ways that you never did as an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, but uh, we, we were both pretty bad accountants. Uh, but seriously, I mean, she's, I, I've seen her in her accounting role. I've seen her in, you know, getting a, a the degree to become a teacher. I've seen her in the teacher role and I've seen her in the real estate role. The real estate role I thought was her destiny uh, and she was really good at it. But the last couple of years, since we, since we left the, the big area and moved to, you know, rural America and here in Gettysburg, PA, my wife has really stepped into, into this role and has just, I mean, God truly has, has his purpose for her right here. And it's really been beautiful to watch. And I think anyone that knows her well, uh, knows just how passionate she is about it. So I'm, and I think by now, I, I, you know, I, I think we're at least a half hour into this. Uh, you should know too. But let's talk about the dads. Um, what role does the father play in all of this? And what does it look like? So I think that's a great question. And I'm actually really passionate about this. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> you mean you weren't passionate before? <laughs> no, I mean, I was just answering your questions, but this is the moment. Um, I, you know, I do have that traditional view that's going to make my husband cringe um, and make some people out in the internet world start screaming. But um, I do believe that our men are our leaders. I believe that they are paving the way. And I think there are leaders in our home. I think they can be our amazing leaders in our country, in our businesses, um, in the direction that we go. So with that understanding, if you take it back to the home and all great homeschools happen within a home and a great homeschool cannot happen without an onboard, onboard husband. Um, I've seen it time and time again I've seen the women desperately want to homeschool their children and the husband desperately want that second income mm. to take the pressure off of him. Um, and I could go into many, many different uh, wormholes here, but I'll keep it above board <laughs> for the sake of my husband's heart. But Please. honestly, at this day and age, um, Women have taken on tremendous roles. Your wife, your girlfriend, your spouse, um, your mother is wearing so many more hats than was ever designed for her or ever demanded in, the, in history. Today, women are running companies, running and managing their children, running households. They're doing everything and they're killing, carrying that burden. Mm -hmm. um, and they're exhausted. There's no break for them. And the men have gotten the easy path. Um, while women are working harder and longer and getting to the top of countries, companies, our men are getting really good at playing video games. <laughs> they are getting really great at taking secondary roles in their marriages and in their houses. So many women I hear say to me, I can't quit because I'm the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And I want to say to them, then your husband needs to step up so that you can care for your children. It is not fair to our women. It is not respectful to our wives to make them do everything. That's not fair. And that's the honest to God truth. We're asking our women to work the extra jobs, to work the long hours, to do all the things, and then to take care of the children. And the compromise that many men are saying to their wives is, well, I help with the laundry. That's not enough. I hate laundry, by the way. I can't stand it. Um, and it's not fair. 
And we're seeing depression in motherhood. We're seeing the burned out mother because so much has been put on her. And I am here to say to the men that if you want a happy, thriving household, then you need to step up. You need to show your wife that she's respected and that she doesn't have to do it all, that you can carry some of the load. Mm. Um, Mother's Day, I talked to many different girlfriends in all different stages of life. And I asked them all the same question. What do you want for Mother's Day? And I have to tell you about 90% of them said, I want my husband to carry the load for me. Because every day the woman is figuring out what's for dinner, how to get to the different practices, how to get violin practice fit in, how to get the groceries, how to get to the job, how to get to the daycare, how to make sure that so-and-so gets paid for this, how to balance the books. And her husband goes to a job and he comes home. And and that is the reality of the American marriage right now. Now, it may not be the reality in your marriage. And don't take offense if you are one of those men that are carrying the load. But for many of the women in America, the husbands under feminism have gotten the easy way out. And it's it has to end. So if you're one of those men who come home and you sit in front of the TV or you watch your baseball game or you're enjoying playing your video games and you're talking to your friends and your wife is standing in the kitchen doing the dishes and saying she's fine, here's your sign. She's not fine. She's not happy about it. It's time to step up. So if you're sitting here and you're saying, hey, I would love to introduce this homeschooling conversation, it's not fair to introduce it as here's one more thing to put on your plate. The conversation begins with, I would like to change our family dynamics. Mm. I, as your husband, want to step up and be the provider that this family needs. I will work two jobs. I will work three jobs. I will do what it takes. I will relocate us. I will ask for the promotions. I will get the graduate degree. I will take the extra tests. I will go the extra mile so that you can thrive being my child's teacher, Mm. being the mother. Um, But asking her to add one more thing to her plate you're asking for failure. And just to say for the woman out there that wants to homeschool and she comes to her husband and she tells him, I want to homeschool. And the husband says, I want you to work because, and I've heard it all. I want vacations. I want a vacation home. I want the money in the retirement account. That's not fair either. So if your wife wants to homeschool and you told her you figure it out, If you're not on board, it's not going to happen because she can't keep carrying the load of everything. Homeschooling your family is a family decision. And that means everybody has to step up and take uncomfortable roles. They have to do the heart. And that heart starts with the husband leading the way and saying, I'm going to do the extra so that you can give the extra to our children. We chose to have these kids. We chose to bring them into this world. And we're choosing to protect them from the violence, from the bullying, from the harassment, from all the things. And if you really believe in that, then men, you got to step up. You got to lead the way. You got to make sure that your home is safe. That means you're not angry. You're not vindictive. You're raising your children in a place that they want to come home to after they're 18. Um, You need to cherish your wife. You need to see the good and the hardworking. You need to help her remember that despite 20, 30 years of a society telling her her value comes from a job and her paycheck, that her value comes from the way you see her, the way your children see her. We talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, more precious than rubies. Men, it is your job to see her as that ruby. It is your job to teach your children 
that <clears throat> she is a precious ruby, that she should be cherished and loved and uplifted and honored. And then she will be called blessed by her children. And you will be that respected man sitting at your city gates. But it all comes from your example in that home of how you treat your wife. Wow. Uh, you know, I host the Man Up Mondays each each Monday, each week. And uh, I think she's calling us all out, guys. I feel like I need to step up, too. I feel like in some respects, I think she was talking to me at different moments. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about doing a, an episode with your wife. Uh, well, Anna, thank you so much for this. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the, the guys. There's a reason I've been promoting the, the, the family business mindset. That's why I've been talking about it here. I've been pointing you to runthemoney.com because if this is a real conversation that you want to have, this is something that you're you're reminiscing about, you know, that, that keeps coming up every month. These are desires that your wife keeps coming to you uh, as the husband, as the father. Consider using your skills and just starting a side hustle. You know, instead of going out and getting that second job, you know, maybe you start with a second job, but maybe you can morph some of those skills into starting a side business for your family. And guess what? Something that I, I've learned as as we as I've done my side hustle, I get to teach my son, who's now six, some of the concepts behind e-commerce and starting an e-commerce store because he he loves golf and we're 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 kind of dabbling in that and in, in, in starting a kids golf online store that uh, that he gets to be an active or a participant in and it teaches him the ideas of entrepreneurship on the tech level and he's also getting that from my in laws at the real estate level because they own real they own rental properties. So just something to, something to consider and it and it's an it's an easy thing to plug into a, a homeschooling family because you're you can set that kind of curriculum and build it into say, you know, a math lesson or something like that. So I just want to put that out there and encourage you to look into it. All right, Anna, we are out of time, but I do want to ask, do you have any recommendations for folks to check out? Facebook groups, um, someone to follow, books, resources, websites, anything come to mind? Um, so a fantastic resource of how to get started is Christian Homeschooling, Christian Homeschoolers. It's on Facebook. Um, is that a group or a page? It is a group. Okay. And you can ask anything. Um, everything has been asked. It is so rich in um, resources, even if you just search the group, you will learn all the curriculums. They've all been tried. You will learn so many different ways um, and tips from actual teachers, grandmothers, homeschoolers of 40 years. Um, that's the first place I always go. So Christian Homeschoolers on Facebook as a group, um, Teaching from Rest is a beautiful book to start off with to help you get into that mindset of not putting so much pressure on yourself, knowing that your child will learn and that they're capable and that um, you can obviously do this. And the last thing I think I would encourage you to do is probably seek out other homeschoolers in your community whether you do it through a curriculum that you pick and you find people doing the same curriculum and join their co-op, whether you join an umbrella school for your first year, whether you just do a social group and just join in for play dates or field trips, um, or you just meet up moms for coffee. But um, to get in with other people that have gotten off the well-traveled road that know what it's like to struggle to find time to take a shower, <laughs> <laughs> um, or wish that they could go to the bathroom alone. Um, these are moments, you know, and experiences that are unique to homeschooling. And it helps to hear other moms say, yes, I know we're not going to the beach this summer either. Um, and it's okay, but I did cry about it for five minutes. Um, and so it does, it does help to have that community. So I would encourage you get a great book join a Facebook group and find somebody tangible that you can touch, feel, and you can vent to that gets it. Well, 
I got to say, first of all, thank you so much, Anna. This was quite the blessing here for all of us here at Dad Devotionals. I am so glad to call you my wife. (laughs) You're so regretting it right now. (laughs) And I got to say, we were actually just joined by a couple other extra co-hosts, not the kids, fortunately, but the the fur babies, if you will. Uh, Bubbles, the dog, I guess, had an emergency bathroom uh, break that she needed. So that might have been the scratching you heard on the door, the glass door behind me. And Elsa the cat is trying to see what else, what all the commotion is down here at just after 1030 at night here. Well, for Anna, for the fur babies, for the real babies sleeping right now, I'm Dave Domzowski, and this is part one of our homeschooling series. Be on the lookout for part two coming up next week. Until Until then, God bless you all. May God grant you many blessed years with you and your families, and thank you so much for listening. Want to start a website for your family business? Check out Bluehost and get everything you need to start up your own website. Select your domain, a design template, and get the right hosting plan. Whether you're starting or growing a digital business, brick and mortar shop, or you're selling eggs on the family farm, Bluehost can help you get your business online. Plans for Dad Devotionals listeners and RunTheMoney.com fans start at $2.95 per month with a free domain for one year. Go to runthemoney.com slash bluehost and sign up. That's runthemoney.com slash bluehost. Get it done. Thank you for listening to Dad Devotionals. Be sure to text me at 717-913-5671 to join the Devoted Dads community. Do me a favor and share this episode with at least one other person who could benefit. Until next time, take care and God bless.